Yes, I'm What is the question? Yeah, um, because this was one of the uh, videos in which uh, you said that Dana, Dana and uh, and the uh, Dana that we got best of from um, um, that was one thing. Uh, and after that, when you met Raja, he asked you, uh, who am I, what you're looking to, and uh, and uh, this is what said, uh, that's bugged you, that question bugged you. Yeah. The thing is, uh, when, when you say Dana was best out to you, does it not mean that ego was resolved, I mean, the truth was no, no, known, no. identification? No, no. Okay. So the, his question is about my spiritual practices, my spiritual sadhana. Uh, there are certain experiences which I have gone through, then somewhere I have recorded. So that question is asked, being asked about that. So I don't want to personalize this question, but I want to give general, in general direction answer. So a person in the spiritual journey does not get Atma Dnana on the day one. It's very difficult. Right? So normally he goes through various stages. Okay. This is not that's natural for anybody. So first and for a simple, simple stage is most of the people go through prayer, bhajans, bhakti, devotion to God. Then uh, some people go through yoga, hatha yoga, kriya yoga, all those practices. In my young age, I was fortunate that uh, I had the exposure, good exposure to some of the hatha yoga and kriya yoga practices in young age, starting from the age of eight. So many years I had a practice. Now, this yoga practice itself helps and prepares your body and mind. That is not nana. So what happens is yoga, you are trying to gain a mastery of the body, mind. You are trying to see how I can master the mind. How I can get rid of all my vasanas. How do I, how do I make my mind silent? Basically, yoga is chitta in yoga. Okay. So that is called yoga. Now, yoga is a practice by which you try to overcome that. Then there is an awakening happens that people call it Kundalini awakening or spiritual awakening, whatever awakening. In that awakening, your energies move inwards. In the yoga, still the energies are going out. The energies which go inward, when they reach the consciousness center in Sahasrara or in the heart center, spiritual heart center, there is much more stability in your dana or mind becomes much more purer. In that pure mind, you can experience oneness with the universe. Okay. Now this oneness is not final Dnana. It's called Saguna Brahma awakening. So what you call as oneness is called Saguna Brahma realization. Okay. In Saguna Brahma realization, what happened? You start feeling connected to everything in the universe. Now what are happening? The I is identified with the existence, manifestation. But you see oneness in the meditation, one in all, a self in all. Right? So now you start feeling oneness. Now actual real bhakti starts, real love starts, because you start feeling the presence of God as I am in everybody. Okay? So this is the highest stage of bhakti compared to the earliest stage of bhakti. Early stage of bhakti, you're praying to God, you're imagining God somewhere, imagining some God form. Now the God is no longer form. God is, no, God is nothing but the manifest reality. Saguna Brahma, the, the Ishwara has appeared in the world to you. So every aspect of creation appears to be divine to you. So that's called oneness. oneness also. Yeah. Right? So now the God is every living being's God. Now what level you start feeling so much of love for everybody, you start feeling oneness with everybody, and you become more and more focused on service because you see the God everywhere, Ishwara, in that sense. It's called Sabuna Brahma, it's not even Nibra Brahma. Okay. So now what happened when you are in Sabuna Brahma? That Sabuna Brahma Nana is called Bhakti or Upasana because mind is still active. I can see the objective world. Objective world is real. Me is real. The individual is real. The world is real. So now they say relationship between the individual who is there and world or universe as a divine. So it's called Virat Rupa Dashana. Arjuna's Vishnu Rupa Dashana, what you have heard in Bhagavad Gita, is called Virat Rupa Dashana. Virat Rupa Dashana. The entire universe is like, a, like God, Brahman, living entity, Brahman. So that is a stage of bhakti, devotion. So much of love. That's why bhakti yoga comes 
in bhagavad gita bhakti was 12 chapter after virat purusha darshana cosmic cosmic form so then bhakti yoga comes then you start living you start seeing the divine divinity everywhere the god becomes a real living reality whereas in your doing bhakti earlier god is still a concept somewhere now god is not a concept you what you touch what you feel what you experience is god you feel oneness with that but ego is not one the experience is there and the experience is there they're connected okay now the ego has become purer that's called sarvana bhakti this is actually real bhakti earlier bhakti was a practice now the practice has matured into a realization of sarvana form of god so now sarvana bhakti ripens you so you start so much of joy and so much of love and uh, service flows to you it's an intense spiritual happens in that in that period you meet some mahatmas some great beings saints they come and bless you in various ways these blessings and manifestation of the uh, presence of mahatmas gives you confidence that you are on the right path okay in that connection i met so many so many mahatmas amma and all those people but this experience of oneness happened much earlier because of the yogi practice the yogi practice actually after yogi practice i used to do my work i was working in a company where we were doing telecom work telecom research for me the work was not work actually work was worship karma yoga so hatha yoga followed by karma yoga opened up some something within me which started giving a feeling of oneness with the existence totally manifest world that's called sagana brahma in that sagana brahma what happens many you start meeting many masters many divine beings so now there's no concept there there's no all reality the world is real i am real okay the world is not like mithya world is real i am real world is satya because it's sagana brahma manifestation of ishvara i am real also jiva is also real so ultimate reality or not going to formless reality so then comes the next stage you have to go to formless reality you have to question self inquiry you have to ask every experience oneness is the experience i am there experience you start asking who am i so then what happens that all those things disappear and pure awareness remains there is no other so earlier is oneness oneness is still a stage of ego this to feel that oneness too is required when two disappears the subject and object disappears pure awareness is called advaita now advaita bhakti is higher form bhakti is called para bhakti now there's no concept it's only pure awareness earlier in dvaita bhakti in uh, in sagana bhakti also there's a duality i am there and god is there in that there's ecstasy joy tears all this will come okay singing god's name will be pleasing you will start feeling goosebumps all this will happen but when it goes to para bhakti or pure awareness then all this merit ex- ecstasy will go ecstasy will become serenity peace now you don't see oneness because there's no tuness right so that is the transition in the self inquiry now everybody will go through all these stages we can't say depending on their karmic footprint some, they may go to some stage they may not go to some stage or they may go to some stage they might have gone to some stage in past life they may come to some stage here so there's no hard and fast rule everybody has to go through these stages right so we can't say oh you are this person got it i want to get this there's no such thing what is required you know should provide it right so it is not that hard and fast rule is there that it, everybody will go through these stages so this i'll tell you through example water ocean and wave okay the water is parabrahma the ocean is ishvara the wave is jiva the wave is big wave small wave is there the wave is identified form the wave worries oh i am a small wave i'll uh, big wave will eat me or i am a small wave i'll die tomorrow the wave is a worried about form okay that's jiva that's called samsara so then wave one day start realizing oh big wave is small wave are a part of ocean oneness now big wave ocean is there big wave is there small wave is there that duality is there but you are seeing the oneness behind right this is the stage of oneness so the small wave says oh big wave is also there it is not a competitor with my brother we are all related we are all child children of the same father this is called saguna brahma then still there is a difference i am small wave he is a big wave this ocean i am small the god is great so that difference is still there but oneness is also there ego is there so next stage comes that also disappears now water only is there water is only ocean water is only wave what is a big wave small wave as water we are all one reality this is called para brahma now it's mukti earlier it's bhakti now it's mukti so a bhakta only bhakta becomes mukta liberated now there's no differences 
Big wave is water, small wave. Ocean is water. Everything is sarvam kalayir brahma. All this is brahman. That is rich. Okay. So everybody doesn't have to go through all these stages. Depending on our what is past life, depending on our karmic footprint, the nature or prakriti existence will take you to such stages. You don't have to worry that oh, I went through this, I didn't do this. Nothing. Else. Just accept what comes in life. That's such a thing. Yes, sir. So when I ask for a yeah. So the question is, she is seeking mukti as a blessing. Okay. Now here you have to understand there is something can be given to you what you don't have. Right? If you don't have a car, probably you'll get a car. Okay. Then if you don't have a, a let's say a job, you may get a job. So I will also get mukti. Mukti is not an object to be got. Mukti is not an event to be. Mukti is not something which you can get in that sense. See, why the problem is what you can get and what, you, what, what when you get something, right? When you get something, that getting, what you get is lost. You earn money, money will be lost. You are born, that will come. Any event in time space will be followed by the opposite event. If you are happy, unhappiness will come. Mukti, if I get, I lose Mukti. Understand? Mukti, if I get, I lose Mukti. Mukti is not something I can get. So then what is Mukti? Mukti is recognition of what I am rather than what I have to get. Right? So what you are, if you recognize, that's called Mukti. You have forgotten, you recognize. Then you'll never lose it because it's you. What is yours, you can never lose. What is not yours, you'll lose. If you get it. So mukti is not something which you can get. Mukti is if you get something, you lose it. Mukti is what you are. Now the problem is I don't know what I am. Okay. So this requires a teaching, a systematic teaching. Okay. Mukti is a result of nana. Mukti is not a result of mechanical practices. The practices will help you, yoga, karma yoga, all those things will help you to prepare you for mukti. Prepare you for nana. Okay. So nana requires a certain degree of tranquility and peace of mind. Whatever is told by guru, you may, to be able to catch it, you need a sense of, you have to develop certain qualities. That's called shama, dama, titiksha, uprati, shraddha, samadhana, mumokshatva. These are the, what are called shatsampati. To develop that yoga is required. Yoga is required because your mind is going here and there. If somebody comes and tells you tomorrow, hey, you are, uh, you are a nice man, you will accept it. Okay. What a fool you are, you'll accept it. Especially if you are a wife tells you. Right? You are not married, fortunately. So, we accept something negative or something in the society we accept easily. But to accept something as I am Brahman, it will be difficult for us. Right? So, that requires a preparation. That preparation is called yoga. So, that's a story. There's a rich man. Okay? Rich man has lost his son. 18 years are over, he is searching for his son. Then people found that son is a beggar somewhere. Okay. So now they bring, bring the back beggar to son, rich man. Rich man cannot tell you are my son. First, first he makes him wash his clothes, then put a dress, good dress, then he gives him some job, makes him stand on his leg, brings confidence. It will take some time. Then he says you are my son. Then the confidence is. Before the confidence comes, you can't tell. So similarly, Pansal Pansal is suffering, you are Brahman, he says, what kind of Brahman I am, yeah, you say, right? So there is some amount of mastery of the mind, some amount of maturity has to be done, that maturity is called yoga. This yoga is karma yoga, bhakti yoga, kriya yoga, all this yoga. Yoga is about bringing maturity. The maturity comes in the form of shama, dhamma, atiti, shavupati, shaddha, samadha, moksha, mental qualities which are required for nana. So nana is not something which you gain. Oh, I know physics. I have physics dana. I know chemistry. I have chemistry. Then I, I know Atma. I have at, I, I know I studied Upanishad. I have got Atma dana. Atma dana is not something you add to your life. Atma dana is something you delete from your life. Something wrong, unwanted things you have to, wrong, unwanted concepts you have to drop. We have been programmed so many concepts since, since birth. Okay. So much of program is gone. The programs you have to delete. You are a software engineer. So programming you understand. So much of unconscious programming is gone. Consciously you have to get rid of unconscious programs. That's called nana. So it's not adding some more programs. 
It's not repetition, I am Brahman, I am Brahman, and it's another program. No. It is, you have to understand why I am Brahman, to get the clarity and conviction. So then what happens? Other programs will stop functioning. Unconscious programs will stop coming down. So this requires Shravana, Manana, Nidhyas. Now, Mukti is a result of soul disorder, Shravana, Matrena. Listening only can give Mukti. Because the listening triggers something in your mind. It goes to subconscious. It hits you. Oh, this is what it is. Listening from a right person, a Dhani, listening in the right way, communication hits you. That's why listening is given very important because I told you earlier, mother tongue is listening to mother and talking. So Dhana goes deep inside when you listen to teaching. In the under guidance of a, a Brahmanishta, means Dhani. And, and somebody, the not only Brahmanishta, you should be able to teach. The teaching ability is called uh, Shrutya. Okay. So, a Brahmanishta is there, but he can't teach you. Then he becomes a Masanta, Mahatma. Okay. Oh, well, that's a great man. What it is? He says, could be a good man. So, that's not a good teaching. It's general philosophy. He is a Santa. You can take a blessing. Okay. But a Dnana has to be given a systematic teaching. Because systematically, uncovering has to be done. We are, our mind is knotted. That unknotting has to be done. So, now unknotting done, you don't gain any new Dnana. You discover what is what you are not. Then what you are there is Atma. What you are there is Brahman. So you are recognizing I am Brahman in that process. Then if you recognize the Brahman, you will never realize that you are I was Brahman earlier. I am Brahman now. I will be in Brahman in the future. That will not last. Okay. So now the desire for Mukti is called Mumukshatva. Right. The desire blessing for Mukti is Atma Dnana given by a proper teacher in a proper way. The process of Mukti is Shavana. The teaching has to be given in a systematic way by a master, and that is Mukti. Understand? Mukti is not something which you get. Mukti is something which you discover by uncovering what is not. So Mukti, nobody can give you Mukti. You have to recognize your Mukti, but somebody can help you to recognize what you are not. What, what unconscious impressions you have. That teaching is based on the Vedanta. A competent teacher can give the teaching in a systematic way. If you give in wrong ways, unsystematic way, that will confuse further. Right? So, unsystematic way or wrong way, if you give, the teaching will confuse further. There's a systematic way of unfolding. That is the skill of the teacher. The person should be skillful in teacher and the skill, he should be done himself. Then the teaching will be very effective. In the presence of that shamana, listening will give that. Then what is manana and nityasa? Oh, listening is like, oh, I'm Brahman, you got very convinced. Inside the room, I'm Brahman. Outside, if I go, again, I become jiva. So, doubts will come. <laughs> The doubts have been sorted out. That's called manana. The doubts can be sorted in satsanga. The doubts can be sorted in seva. Okay. Then nidityasa means what? Nidityasa means say I sit silently and become aware of I am Brahman. All wrong thoughts I remove by right understanding. This is silent meditation. Nidityasa also means while working also I am awareness. I bring awareness. I am Brahman. While while doing anything also I bring awareness. I am Brahman. So nidityasa can be with open eyes or closed eyes. So mukti if the blessing for Mukti is Nana. Blessing of Nana is recognition of Mukti. Are you clear? Okay. So, anybody else have any questions? <laughs>